Alright, welcome back to Night in the Woods, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Olive Branch, and once again, my good friend Maple Leaf is here to talk about ghosts. Last time, we went grave robbing, much to my chagrin. <laughs> my chagrin? <laughs> well, I didn't want May to do it, and then she did it. Yeah, well, May also got a wicked-ass headache, and she's like, I have to talk to everyone. So, now we're here. She has to talk to all of them right now in, apparently, Greg's living room. Yeah, that's the same thing that she did last time. So what do we tell them? Is a ghost in her head, or it's a ghost following me? Or she has no idea? Well, I mean, better to be honest and say I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's the ghost in the head. That's what she's discussed before, isn't it? I don't recall her ever once saying that she had a ghost in her head. Well, more than once she said, my head feels like it's going to explode, there's someone following me. She's already mentioned it a couple times, so I figured that's the most logical explanation for me to be like, what the fuck is happening to me? Is she paranoid? Does she have some kind of brain disease right now, or what? What, talking about the dreams? I don't know. Just the fact that she thinks that she's constantly being followed and she believes in these ghosts so much. Well, she is saying that she's getting psychosomatic things out of it. She's getting physical feelings and reactions to this shit. Like, see, she keeps hearing a noise when a ghost is nearby. Remember that video, the 20th episode or 21st, when she had that dream after Harfest where she... Someone rips open a hole in my brain. God damn. And uh, she had that black and white thing, and she's walking closer and closer and hear this keening sound that just goes silent when she gets close to this, like, this shrine-looking thing. I think that's the sound she means. She's here to have a serious heart-to-heart -heart with all of her friends, the people that she trusts the most. Angus, Greg, and Beatrice. Maybe it's not a ghost, and May just doesn't know how to, dis how to describe it any better. Well, Greg is already saying there are 50 better explanations. Like what? Like maybe you're schizophrenic, May? Has there ever been a case of a person seeing something really traumatic and then suddenly they have these stress migraines, uh, whatever is happening to May, like she also suddenly sees God? Uh, would, it, would you say PTSD? Um, Like a shell shock or something? Like people go to war and they just get fucked up and they're like, they get bad reactions to shit? I mean, you see, if you witness a kidnapping, that's pretty traumatic. It is pretty traumatic. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I would say PTSD fits in the bill. May's like, I know it's there. I know what I saw. I like the little the fact that her animation went from like wide eyed scared to be like, fuck you all. It's because no one believes her when she says ghost. I will go alone. Well when you put it that way, it doesn't sound like very far or scary at all. <laughs> Past the basketball court? But it's late, dude, and there was a severed arm. What do you all care? You don't believe me anyway. Friends, who needs them? Well... This is me not really taking May's side, me not putting myself in May's shoes, but the, when, when she says, none of you believe me, I feel like it's kind of guilt trippy. You think so? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it is kind of like it's kind of like, oh, fine, you don't believe me. <laughs> and she's like, she's she's willing to put herself in harm's way, and harm means going out in the woods at night alone, uh, without her friends, and she's just gonna do it whether or not anyone's with her. So you think it's just destructive behavior that's roping in some sympathy? Well, quite possibly. I mean, she's probably not actively doing it. I mean, we can read it like that, but May's definitely, like, she definitely has some men some issues, and she's like, I need to face this. And now her friends are like, okay, you have to face that. We're with you, man. Aw. Now everyone's with her. We're gonna go ghost busting, guys. Does busting make you feel good? Alone. At night. I wonder sometimes why the uh, the writers of this game chose to cut certain speech balloons at certain parts. 
Probably for emphasis. For emphasis, like, I don't want you up there, alone, at night. Yeah. Like, that's how someone would speak? Yeah. Get the party assorted. Check your items. You have to sort your order very specifically. Angus has to go first, he's the tank. No, 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 Angus is like the backup healer. He's a smart mage ca caster. Look at him. Greg's the thief. A guy that huge isn't the tank? No, he's 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 a smart brainiac. He's huge, but he's kind of fat and slow. Greg being the thief, I, am, I accept. May is the ninja. <laughs> she can avoid first strikes. Beatrice is the damage. Well, B, that would mean that B is either the warrior or she's the healer if Angus is the tank. She's the cleric, yeah. She's got the ink in her chest. <laughs> in any case, you're definitely not supposed to put the ninja first. They're very squishy. Well, the changing party order. <laughs> Ideally, assuming Angus is the tank like he should be, it would be Angus, then... Greg, then May, then B. B in the far back? She's the healer. I guess you're right. You never put your healer first. That's like leading a charge with Mercy in Overwatch. The best idea. It can be done. You're not supposed to. Just because it's possible doesn't mean it's a good idea. Her gun does a surprisingly amount of damage. I was praying. Yeah, she is a cleric, all right. Maze impressed. Well, I mean, if we're gonna, if we're talking about going to confront ghosts, maybe it's a good idea to get a little religious. Yeah, just a, a, a slight amount of uh, a spirituality in your side. It doesn't hurt to pray. Yeah. Just to be like, let's just give a quick cross in our hearts, hope to die, and let's go face some spirituality shit. Let's try not to stick needles in eyes, because that's really quite gory if you think about it. Well, Greg has two knives. He can knife fight if he has to. This is a messy, messy scrapyard. So we're to the left of... Uh... Fuck, what's that diner called? The Click Clack. The Click Clack, yeah, where we always find germ. Yep. I assume that's over there, yeah. Yeah, okay. We went all the way around the fence, I assume. Like, we're exploring where Aunt Molly said she'd go check it out, and she's like, there's nothing there. And now May's like, I'm gonna check it for myself at this point. She shivered. That means ghosts are nearby. I watched The Sixth Sense. All this old, old stuff out here. It's here every night. It's watching you. What was that float that May fed the mallard? Moose? Mallard. Ma well, what's the what's the animal? That's a duck. That's a duck. Ah, oh, jeez, May's freaking out, man. She's having an existential crisis. Because something is so old and has been there a long time. Well, she didn't have this reaction when she met the mallard. Well, this, I think Mallard was not as old as all that. I mean, these are like minecarts, you know? We're trying to get historical here. We should go back. This is stupid. That's the May response. This is stupid. Ghost hunt. Woo. Fun. <laughs> she's, not, she's not acting like she's like super into this. No, I think she's getting second thoughts. I was getting all spooky. Yeah, now the mood lighting is getting in. It's kicking in. I wonder what could possibly happen next. Ghosts, man. It's a big old drop off. O M G. What is this, a cult? It looks like it, doesn't it? I mean, they're all dressed up like the ghost guy. What are they? What are they wearing on their heads? Bags? Do they all have mohawks? They're all punks. I think they're wearing like an overcoat and bags on their heads. 
This is interesting. Lerv? Is it like a key name or a code name? Nickname? A code name, yeah. Shit, we just walked into the mafia, man. It ain't like you weren't on the other side of this before. It was a mistake! Oh, so this guy was a cultist and then he fucked up? I owned up to it. I was asking a question, Olive Branch. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Where if this is you owning up to it? Uh, apparently not, dude. Yeah. One mistake. You left a goddamn arm in front of the click like, oh, we found our... Well, we found our thief, I guess. Our, so, our amputee. Our, our dismemberer. Because of you, God knows what's going to happen to this town. Well, God already visited. Yeah, he's not impressed. I guess God would know. It was your screw-up. Yeah, you, you left an arm out there, dude. How can you miss an arm? Okay, so we got a bunch of cultists. This guy named Lerv cut off someone's arm and left it in front of the click-clack. And now his leg is under the rock, I guess. I was panicked, okay? I was embarrassed. Embarrassed? I sure wish you'd called me, Lerv. Lerv, Lerv, Lerv. Bad run of luck, kid. The game was rigged from the start. I wonder what species they are. Well, they are all... They're definitely not alligators. It's impossible to tell that. I got family. Don't insult us. No one loves you, Lerv. You know you don't want to, but we got to worry about Genie and the girls. Well, alright. So, we know exactly what's going to happen to this guy. <laughs> Completely taken care of. And not in that way. They'll never want for nothing. So... Yeah, because you don't need nothing when you're dead. Yeah, exactly. E. God, this guy's leg must be a mess. Did they shove him down the cliff? Fuck if I know, man. B broke his leg? Dave, Rick, Benny. Guys, you know me. Oh, more names. We don't know any of them, though, do we? No, I never heard of these names. Alright, Dave, you hold them. You know, this is just me throwing things out there. It's a gut feeling, and I don't really have anything to go by it. But I bet Molly's in there. You think so? I, I like, bet. Like she was like she's a part of this cult thing. I wouldn't be surprised. Oi. This doesn't look good. What, are they getting the head headsman's axe or breaking his leg? I think. Ew. I think we just heard a snap. Ew. Ah, hold still. This go easier if yeah. He's not. Dude, you just broke a dude's leg. And I think he just tore it off. There it goes. Yuck. Couldn't they knock him out first? I think they're going to kill him anyway, so what's the point? Well, I mean, they clearly don't want to kill him. Really? Even, if they, even if they gotta. They, they could shoot him up with... Uh, Tranquilizers? Yeah, sleepy drugs. Or at least punch him in the head a couple times, I don't know. Ain't no one can hear you this far out. Well, shit. Wait a second, do you think that this guy here is that alligator who said I'm moving out and, uh, like he's moving away from his friend, you know? Actually, it's entirely possible that, uh, <laughs> fuck, what's the homeless guy's name? Um, uh, God, uh, I would say Beanie for some reason, it's <laughs> not, it's, <laughs> Well, whatever, it's him. One of, it's him? Like, like, he might be in, in here somewhere. I mean, he did say that he was going home. And we did assume that that meant that he was going to kill himself, but it's quite possible that he's here. Okay, they recognize us. Yeah, like, someone here apparently knows May's name. Which means it's, someone that, it's someone that we know. Man, they hiked up that cliff pretty fast. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to jump those rocks, but I do it anyway. Because, you know, I do not want to get caught. Yeah, it's a solid guess. I like this segment better when it was called Run Run Ruggy Chops. You don't even know what that's from. I do not know. It's from Shantae. Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. 
Those guys are running fast. Decidedly less serious than this. Ah, oh, someone just shot us. Well. Good. That's how I wanted to die. <laughs> Next time, guys, we're going to find out exactly what happened. <laughs>